Good morning. I'm going to present a study that was commissioned by JUNIMA. JUNIMA is the Joint UN Initiative on Migration, Health and HIV in Asia, based in Bangkok. And the co-chair of this uh, <coughs> partnership or initiative is ILO and Karamasia, which is a civil society organization. Geneva is a partnership between governments, between civil society organizations and UN agencies. And this study was commissioned because Geneva is trying for the last two years to have an interregional dialogue between Asia countries and, and uh, Gulf in the many region countries. And it has been impossible so far to get the acts together from these two regions to ensure that we can start having a dialogue between the sending countries and the receiving countries. So we decided to get this study to go more, get some qualitative information, but also some data on what are the mandatory health screening practices in the sending countries, but also in the receiving countries. <clears throat> so this is the outline of my presentation. Assessment. It was also done in a methodology through focal group discussions with prospective returning and deporting migrants. The triangulation includes literature re review, focal group discussions with migrant workers conducted in local languages, key informant interviews, recruiting agencies, health testing centers, ministers dealing with labor and migration as well as health issues. Our key partners in the countries were achieved in the Philippines, Karam, Cambodia, and Solidaritas Perempuan in Indonesia. Limitations, some limitations. There are some small scale, sorry. Uh. There are some small scale <coughs> limitations. And um, the scale pilot programs in which are necessary to review, there was no time to review all these small pilot programs in some countries. The cost of the study it was also revealed that ministers of interior have a significant role in dispute settlement, deportation, but due to time constraints, they were not contacted. The findings cannot be used to make broad generalizations, but do paint an overall picture of the situation and response. Since the main aim of the mandatory testing is often to deny employment, it violates the right to work, especially of those whose medical care is perceived to be too costly or to keep disease away from the host country through misguided perceptions and practices on moral grounds in certain communities. Also, some health concerns such as HIV, STI, is spread by specific behaviors rather than the mere presence of careers. And since the virus already is present in virtually every country, so an ineffective public health measure. UNAIDS and ILO recommend voluntary HIV testing in the context of confidentiality, informed consent, and pre- and post-test counseling, as opposed to mandatory HIV testing of workers, whether individuals are seeking work within their countries of origin or abroad to preserve their human rights and promote public health. <clears throat> ILO Recommendation 200. It is the only international legal instrument aiming to strengthen universal access to HIV prevention, treatment, care and support service for all workers, including migrants, regardless of the legal status of their occupation. And now I'm going to the findings. Medical screening, health screening, health testing is interchangeable used in the three countries, so-called differently in different countries' contexts, HIV positive in the unfit category. Medical tests are drug test blood, VDRL, HIV, hepatitis B and C, STI, tuberculosis, jaundice, diabetes, urine, sugar, pregnancy, hypertension, cholesterol, blood pressure, chest X-ray, asthma, epilepsy, skin diseases, mental illness, depression, psychiatric disorder, amnesia, amnesia and pregnancy. And this is all the mandatory tests they have to do pre-departure, know, knowing that when they arrive in the receiving country, they have to undergo exactly the same tests in the first 30 days. This is up, up on the first row, all the tests. 
the, sending, the receiving countries and the sending countries. There's only one exception, which is Thailand, that does not <coughs> demand uh, a mandatory HIV testing but in the law. But sometimes this law is not well enforced, and people also do HIV tests for migrants coming to Thailand. Although none of the migrants could name a complete list of medical tests they undergo, post-counseling migrants had varying perspectives on receiving post-counseling services. In the Philippines, only few said post-counseling was provided for those with positive seroprevalence results and were referred for confirmatory testing because the NGO called the chief is doing a fantastic job in the Philippines. And now this is the journey if you want to migrate to a Gulf country, this is your journey to go. If you are in the Philippines, Cambodia, or Indonesia. I'm going to stay a little more time in this slide. Shows the health screen and refer a flow chart for migrants. Department of Health Bureau of Health Facilities and Services in the Philippines authenticates medical exam report and medical certification overseas foreign workers. While in Cambodia and Indonesia, medical certification done by the health screening facilities, there is no need for ratification. In Cambodia and Indonesian, migrants do not have a direct contact with the health screening facilities. This hampers their access to services and first-hand information they need. Although two health screening facilities, one run by the government and another one with the GAMCA, which is the Gulf Agency for Medical Certifications the Association Clinic in Indonesia, reported providing referral service for the unfit workers, but this depended on migrant workers coming back to the clinic. There was no formal mechanism to call the migrant workers as the results were first provided provided to the recruiting agencies, who then informed the migrants that they were unfit. In the Philippines, a clear guidelines and an established mechanism for referral, unfit work referred to health services for confirmatory tests and treatment, especially true for temporary unfit to work and TB as well. Referral made by medical screening facilities. Referral generally happens in the form of information sharing about where to go, not accompanied. No accompanying referral or follow-up mechanism is a challenge because we lost the people in between. Cambodia and Indonesia, no guidelines or established mechanisms for referral services. No referral service for unfit migrants. Migrants do not receive their test results, so they don't know if they are fit or unfit until informed by recruiting agencies. This limits referral from the medical screening centers. If temporarily unfit, migrants refer for treatment by recruiting agency. If permanently unfit, no referral, no information channel from the recruiting agency. A recruiting agency in Cambodia said, we don't have the money to make referral. We simply tell them that they are unfit, and tell them to go to NGO for treatment. However, Cambodia Department of Occupational Health and Safety Health Screening Center includes referral and treatment for unfit migrants, but loss to follow up is a concern. Indonesia, one of the certified health testing centers, reported providing a company referral in case of HIV confirmatory tests only. First of all, there are a relative big size of permanently and fit to work migrants on health grants, although data information is patchy. Permanent are like ghost populations with limited and inadequate access to services. They reported hopelessness, anxiety about employment opportunities, and face isolation, stigma, and discrimination. Employment, access to ARVs, and regular HIV treatment-related follow-up services are some of the key issues facing this group of migrants. And now it's also interesting, this slide. This, <coughs> the GAMCAM, which is the Gulf Approved Medical Centers Association Certified and Government Accredited Clinics in Jakarta, shows that out of 10,543 migrant workers tested at this clinic between the period of January to Oscar 2013, a total of 1,446 were certified unfit to work. As you can see, for TB, there was 868 cases. And also for <clears throat> VDRL, 148, 60 pregnant women, and hepatitis B, 191. Finding four. Unfit to work, equal 
deportation, except from Thailand. Fit to work certification required for issuance and renewal of work visa and residence permit in all three countries. If unfit, deported from Gulf countries and Malaysia. Experience of deportation from Thailand slightly different. Deportation on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the employer. Sometimes it's possible to look for other jobs, even when visa work permit is cancelled. Deportation not as inhumane. Employer brings the migrants to the border and are handed over to recruiting agencies or to NGOs in transitional facilities. Discriminatory practice against pregnant women. They are automatically deported when they are found to be pregnant. But migrants are not informed about the reason for their deportation. Work permit visa usually the first thing to be cancelled. First of all, in other three countries, there are well-established departments within Ministers of Health, Labour and Migration, as well as Minister of Interior, with the responsible for migrant welfare, including for health and social protection. And there seems to be many relevant and important issues in the pipeline. But the existing policies and programs are different and similar in many aspects. In the Philippines, there seems to be established mechanisms and thus a better coordination among partners, such as healthcare providers, recruiting agencies and government agencies, to monitor and report on migrant cells screenings. In Indonesia and Philippines, there are standard operation procedures for health screening among migrants, but in Cambodia, there is no such guidance. In the Philippines, an administrative order states that medical screening, especially for HIV, VDRL, and hepatitis B, of all overseas foreign workers based on the requirement of the destination country. This is despite a national law that states HIV tests should be voluntary and confidential. The caveat is that overseas are not protected under the national law. In Indonesia in 2007, HIV testing guidelines for migrants clearly laid out that HIV testing should be voluntary and confidential. However, in 2011, a presidential decree has been passed obliging health screening, mental and physical, and additional tests required to the third party, migrant workers. Although the same decree regulates health screening to be conducted using VCT or PICT, provide initiative counseling and testing, unless in medical emergencies for police and armed forces, and a request from authority based on national laws and regulations. Cambodia follows the ILO recommendation 200, and there is a law that prohibits mandatory testing, but in reality, HIV testing for migrants is mandatory. A great deal of negative impact of mandatory testing, loss of overseas employment opportunity, fear and isolation, driving migrants away from required health services, and violation of their fundamental rights to integrity, dignity, privacy, and information. <clears throat> Under the hiring policies of the Gulf countries, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, foreign workers from the India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Philippines, Nepal, Indonesia, and other Asian countries are required to pass the medical tests conducted only by their uh, certified approved medical centers association and the clinics, which is GAMCA, and, but also from FOMEMA, which is the foreign workers medical screening experts. Yes, in many parts of Asia, we have heard that the recruiting agencies are problematic for migrants. They need to be sensitized on human rights issues of migrant workers. In a way, they are like the police and law enforcement for key population interventions, traditionally seen as enemies rather than allies. They have the potential to be the critical enablers of safe migration programs. This study revealed there is an urgent need to develop strategic partners with at least interested open champions, recruiting agencies to address some of the abuses, exploitation, and health concerns facing migrants. Recommendations? Yeah, self-explanatory. Ensure outright prohibition of mandatory testing of HIV in sending countries. I'll let you read them. Operational research, strict regulatory practices and strength in monitoring, health awareness, health promotion, education. <clears throat> yeah. 
You can take a photo. I'm already finishing. <laughs> I'm not going to read the recommendations. You can read them and take a photo. <laughs> I'm almost done. Two more slides. Acknowledgements and thank you.